You're going to see here in my demonstration, we've analyzed 114 million events, 2,500 anomalies, three active risks. There are three entities with extremely high risk scores. You're going to see we plot this on a graph. This is actually 0 to 100. 100 being you, you had better go and take action because it's pretty severe. We're going to jump down. The quickest one is to jump right into our users. Jumping into our users, we see we have a user, Henry Dave, with a risk level of 98. You can see that's all plotted on the graph here. I have grays and reds inside here. I click on Henry Dave and I have one extreme risk. Scrolling on down, you can see I've got the gray ones, which have been tagged and flagged, but not necessarily a high risk. First of all, we're going to take a look at this. Henry Dave worked in this hour, which was very usual based upon past activity. Just clicking on that, boom, straight in front of you, you can see exactly what's going on. When we analyzed the user, Henry Dave, and we analyzed all of Henry Dave's peers, right? So we're looking at the user repositories of where groups and authentication is provided. We then looked at the resources. The resources could be databases, they could be file servers, they could be SharePoint servers. We looked at the resources. When we compared the two, Henry Dave stands out. Nobody typically works in this hour who matches and falls into the same or similar categories as the groups and resource activity that Henry Dave belongs to. So that is straight out of the box. It is an anomaly. Now, could this be Henry Dave working on a project? Yeah, which is fine, as long as the security analyst can get in and take a look at this. Could it be malware that was downloaded by Henry Dave and it's now leveraging his permissions to go and get in and do some sort of bad activities, ransomware, encrypt data, whatever the case is. Here we go. This is a UEBA rule that's automatically tagged and flagged this. Scrolling on down, I've got some other ones we can go and take a look at. This one is using a larger amount of data. So what we typically see here, you can read it. Henry Dave sent 1.3 gigs in an hour to a proxy on first access it's much more than people typically do 26 kilobytes kind of funny so here we're observing that i mean if any company has this running straight off the bat you can detect uh users who are about to leave uh any malware that's sending data out of the company any people that are trying to perform exfiltration straight off the bat just looking at the information that logpoint provides you using our user behavior analytics engine to present that information right to you very in a very expedited manner I can go on and click on more of these. What I'd like to do is click inside our um, inside our knowledge base. Oh, I'm sorry, not knowledge base, inside the configuration. We have a UEBA board. Just want to touch on this super briefly. In our UEBA board, what we do is we take a time range of information that we believe is pertinent to look at. 30 days is about right. You know, you could reduce this information if you want it to be more secure. Um, if you wanted to reduce a couple of false positives, like a user may back up their machine once a month. We're going to see a high spike. You're going to incorporate that. Reduce that down, you'll leave it out. So 30 days is a typical sort of decent time range. And then these are, the, these are the data sources. Now, I know it says Active Directory. The best one to talk about is resource access. Logpoint considers a resource to be a resource. It is not a Windows file server or an Oracle database. It is a resource that people access. So a resource is purely SharePoint, uh, Windows file service databases, Salesforce, you name it, that is a resource. And likewise, VPN, we don't specify it's sort of a specific, like a checkpoint VPN, it is any VPN technology. So these are the six categories that we look at, rate them one to 100, we develop the risk, report it back, the security analyst can then take action on that.